like the action. And this L is actually the function of what? Q, and P. We need so as a unique variable here. But it's essentially the function of what? Let's define it in the computation space. It is a function of Q and Q dots. So what is the equation of motion? So you are going to be by dt, partial L rate, partial Q dot, minus partial L rate, partial Q is equal to zero. So this is an equation of motion for, for a single particle, okay, for a single degree of period. Okay. Now, uh, in field theory, uh, what we have done? So we have actually uh, taken this action in this way, fashion. So d4 of x and wrote this L as a Lagrangian density. Is it? What is this? Okay, Lagrangian density is function of what? Okay. Let's take the Lagrangian density of some free field. What was that? 16 pi c f mu nu f mu nu. Is it so? So for free field, this is the Lagrangian density. So what this object is? It is simply d square minus e square. So that means that Lagrangian here is a function of what? Field is. So we'll call now Lagrangian this object. We'll not call any. Uh, okay. So this section is the Lagrangian uh, obtained by integrating our volume with this Lagrangian density. But now on, now onwards, I will call this L to be the Lagrangian. It's actually Lagrangian density. When I say Lagrangian, it means what? Lagrangian density. Okay. So this Lagrangian is simply the function of what? Fields. Is that true? Okay. So, in general, let me call phi to be the field. Let's call phi of x. Okay. This x is a four vector, uh, a four coordinate, both x and p. It's like this. Let me write a field x. Okay. So, let's call phi to be the field, a general field. It can be electromagnetic field. It can be any. It can be scalar field. It can be any arbitrary thing. Okay. So you can think this phi, let's say, um, let's take a simplest possible example. You know a string, motion on a string? Let's say if you are having a string that's fixed uh, by two ends, okay? Let's say it's a fixed string, okay? Uh, so let's take simple string, huh? okay? So you displace it, so it will vibrate, okay? Whether it will vibrate uh, in the transverse direction, uh, you the motion in the horizontal direction, whatsoever. I okay, forget those things. Okay, you can write actually the displacement uh, at any given point uh, of this very string if you displace it by this kind of object, this phi. Okay, clear? So much the motion of the string can be instead of representing it by the coordinates, let's say q and q dot. You simply write it by in terms of what? F5. Clear? The way we are writing, uh, let's say, electric and magnetic field in terms of what? A, is it? So you can think A sub. Okay, so um, I should not say it as a coordinate, but uh, it is some variable on which actually this Lagrangian depends. Okay, let me write uh, this way. This Lagrangian is actually, the, in general, a function. OK. So instead of this q, q is a variable for a single particle, OK? So I will write this single particle coordinate. I will generalize to some field of phi, OK? So this field of phi will just give me the representation, OK, mm, of a given point. Eh? Got it? So you can think this phi to be simply what? A coordinate in terms like this thing. Clear? Got it? So much here? Okay. So, and I will write now you are having a q dot. So, that means I need actually the derivative of what? Phi. Okay. So, I will write like this thing phi dot. So, that means time derivative. When I am in four dimensions, so space and time are on equal footing, is it? So that means I look at as a word, 
and derivative with respect to space. So, so much sure? You got my point? So that means I am generalizing this serial Lagrangian to this Lagrangian. Clear? Got it? Okay. So I will not assume higher order terms because I need my theory to be local in nature. Okay? So much sure? It is simply the generalizer. You can think this, okay, if you are not able to understand it, okay, uh, this field, you can think this phi, a quantity analogous to Q, okay? And for Q dot, I am having analogous terms, either it will be phi dot or it will be uh, derivative with respect to space, okay? Got it? So much sure? Clear? Okay, so this I write in this way. L is a function of this phi, okay, and sum. Okay, so this uh, these two uh, things I can merge in a single form. So this contains both time derivative as well as space derivative. Is it? So much sure? So that means our Lagrangian density in general it's a function of what? Field and its derivatives with respect to time and space. Clear? Got it? Okay, good. So now I need an equation of motion. Okay, so here you are having Euler Lagrange equation, you are derived. Okay, for this Lagrange, you are having these as the Euler Lagrange equation for it. Um, I mean for single particle, is it? Clear? So what I require? So if I now, I, if I am having this very Lagrange, I require what? Euler Lagrange equation. Clear? Oh, so much, much. Now let's try to generalize it. Let, let's try to. Uh, go from this very equation, okay, try to do it. So what you are having here, okay, first thing is, okay, let's look at this very thing. So you are having simply partial L by partial Q, clear? So that means this should go as, like this thing, okay, let's write zero here. It should go as some partial L by some partial phi. Because it, it contains simply the derivative with, with respect to coordinate. Okay, so what is our coordinate here? Okay, analogous term is phi, okay? So, let's write this minus. So now then what you are having? So this is partial by, partial L by partial Q dot. So it's a derivative with respect to? No, this is a quantity which is, which is respect to what? What? Okay, so it's a quantity, okay, it's a derivative with respect to what? Q dot. Q dot is actually dQ by dt, is it? It's something with respect to time. So that means I need, okay, I can be having these kind of terms, partial by partial phi dot, okay, and then you are having this part d by dt. Okay, let's write it as partial by partial t kind of thing. Okay, I will not write, so, the, and there can be another term. Okay, what is the another term? So since I am having space and time on equal footing, so I should be having a space derivative as well, is it? So that means I can be having like this thing, partial L by partial what? Uh, this phi. Okay, so that means my equation of motion should contain how many terms? So it should contain actually the derivative with respect to space and derivative with respect to time, okay? And then this kind of object. So we don't know what are the signs between these things, clear? So much here? Okay, we write this kind of equation for field. I will derive it in a moment. So it's like this thing, partial mu, partial L by partial, partial mu, phi, okay, this way. Partial L by partial phi, that's equal to zero. So this is the Euler Lagrange equation for fields. Okay, if you know the sum field phi, okay, so you can arrive at what? Euler Lagrange equation. Okay, now let's look at, okay, so this very term is there. Now let's look at this thing. So you can be having partial, okay, there is a sum over mu. So you will be having zero and zero. So that will give me the time derivative, is it? Then you are having what? I and I. So that will give me what? Space derivative. Okay? Got it? So that means this kind of equation gets generalized to this very form. So much of this is the equation what we are trying to derive. Okay, so when you okay, write some system in terms of fields, then you need to derive actually an equation of motion for a given field. Clear? Got my point? Any question? Any question? 
Okay, so if you are having, let's say, uh, okay, you can think this field as actually the conti okay, continuous uh, generalization of the discrete variables. Okay, you usually, okay, you can discrete, let's say, you are having some space, okay, you discretize it like this thing, okay, in, in okay, in physical terms, you discretize, discretize it. So you can, since you can write, so these points are very close to each other, okay, so for every point you can represent it by coordinate, then once you generalize it to the continuum form, so then, okay, uh, this discrete structure is gone, you can, okay, so when you map it to the continuous system, okay, and it's, okay, removing the, this discreteness, so then this phi will emerge. So, sure? so this phi is simply the continuous generalization of the coordinates of the, okay, in the discrete form. Feel it? Got it? So if you are having confusion how to uh, arrive at this thing, I will suggest you go to the Goldstein's book. So there is a one unit, a transition from discrete to the continuous system. You are done actually it in the classical mechanics course, okay? Have you done it? Okay, so if you have not done it, go through the first, first paragraph of that very unit, eh? I mean first few sections, then you can understand it, how we generalize actually, how we go from actually the discretized version to the continuum form. So this phi will simply represent me the continuum form of, um, uh, I mean, it will be simply the, uh, a coordinate but in a, a continuous form, in, a, in simple terms, okay? So, so much sure? Because, okay, let's take, uh, let's have, uh, let's assume you are having phi of x, okay? At a given point, you will be having one value of phi, okay? So, so much sure? Now, here you are having q, if you are having q, okay, let's say at a t, so at a given time, you will be having one value of this coordinate, so like this thing. So, you can have these values. Okay, when the when the distance between separation it tends to zero, then you can see it as a continuum object. Eh? Take off a net, okay? So you are having the net. So that's actually when you look at it from the closer uh, viewpoint, when you when you are very close to the net, how you fi find out the net? It has a discrete version, is it? When you move far away, what you will do? You observe it as a continuous form, okay? So that means any variation in the, okay, on the surface of that very net, you can represent that in terms of phi. Clear? So this phi, okay, so you can think this phi as simply the generalization of the coordinate. Okay, but it, has a, it is as a function. It will now represent a smooth function. Clear? So let's take this reaction. Okay, phi itself is a function of coordinator. So I can write this way. So phi of x partial mu phi of x. Hello? So now let's vary delta s. Let's apply the variation principle. So it means you are having d4 of x. Okay, we will assume the condition, boundary condition is that field is vanish at infinity or at boundary. Okay, phi vanishes at the boundary. Clear? So so I am having this L. So let me call it what is X. So now how I will write it? So this is variation L. So it is delta F. So it will be partial F by, so I apply Euler term. So it will be partial L by partial phi, is it? Multiplied by delta phi. Then again, partial L by partial of this thing, is it? Multiplied by delta this, like this way. So you are having partial L by partial phi, 
okay variation in phi plus then the differentiation with respect to this thing partial mu phi okay delta partial clear term for this thing, uh, for this kind of integral or for this kind of differentiation. We call these as the functional integrals, okay? Uh, functional means, uh, in simple terms, function of a function, okay? Now look here, uh, uh, Lagrangian is a function, but what is the argument then? Or what are the input variables? These are functions itself, okay? Now if you give an input as a function some phi, Okay, then you can calculate the derivative. So these are the input things. So you calculate then this the function. What is the value of the function? But ultimately, what it gives me? Action. What is action? It's a number. Is action a number or not? It's a scalar quantity. It's a number. It's purely number. So that means uh, the input of a given functional. Okay. So it maps to a number. So this is the property of a functional. This is how we define a functional. If you are hang in simpler terms, a function of a function, but if it yields you a number, okay? If its output is a number, then we call that as a functional, okay? All these things we are doing actually, the functional differentiation. Now look here, it's a differentiation with respect to a function. Phi is a function, is it? So partial new phi is a function, is it? Clear? So much on? So now look here, uh, okay, so let me write delta phi, so I will take this delta here. Right. Hello? Okay, so can I do it? Just understand the two things, okay. So now let's take, okay, uh, we need to integrate this very term by parts. Okay, uh, so for that matter, what I will do, I will convert this entire object into a total derivative with the help of the derivative what is existing here, okay? So let me write this as partial mu this way, partial L by partial partial mu phi delta phi. So that's equal to partial mu partial L by partial partial mu phi then delta phi like this way then plus partial L by partial mu phi, okay, partial mu of delta phi. It is a term, but we are seeking. Clear? So this is the term we are seeking? True? Huh? Okay, good. Now let's integrate uh, this over some value. So let's call the volume D. So D4 of X. So then you are Now look at this very term. Okay, forget this partial mu. So this is a vector, is it? So that means it is the four divergence. Is this a four divergence? So if you look at this a total derivative, is it? So if you are having total derivative integrating over a value, so you can convert it to the surface integral by applying Gauss theorem, is it? So so you can let's call this as let's assume for time being, let's call this as f mu. So what you are having there? So you are having partial uh, so f mu, okay? So you are having f mu like this, okay? So, so what you are having then? So you are having this kind of integral that we write g4 of x partial mu f mu. So this kind of integral. So is this a four divergence? Is this a four divergence? So then you can apply Gauss law. Gauss theorem you can apply, so you convert it to the surface integral. Okay, 
behave like this way. So what that will be? F mu some surface ds. Clear? So this is the term we have done earlier. Okay. So now in the surface extends to infinity. Okay. So that means since the field vanishes at the boundary, so it is equal to zero. So in other words, this very term, when I convert to the, okay, let me write. So this very term, in other words, uh, this omega d4 of x, partial mu, let me write this way, partial L by partial, partial by phi, delta phi, since field vanishes at the boundary. So it's like this thing, by God's term, okay, so what you'll be getting? partial L by partial partial mu phi, delta phi, and then D S mu. Okay? So this is your F. Huh? So this goes to zero. Clear? <coughs> Any question? Okay, so now what we are having, what we have at hand, uh, so this very term goes to zero, it means this term is equal to minus times this thing. Uh, in other words, I am having like this way, d4 of x partial L by partial partial mu phi, partial mu phi delta phi. Okay, so that's equal to minus integral d4 of x partial mu partial L by partial partial mu phi. Okay. So now let's substitute this very integral. So it is this very objective. Let's substitute what that will give me a minus sign. So I'll be having okay. So use this result here. Okay. okay. So what you will get? So it is implies delta s is equal to d four of x partial L by partial phi, I will take delta phi common, okay, because you are having delta phi here and delta phi here, so that I will take common, so it's partial okay, and that has to be equal to zero, because delta variation should be what? Variation should be zero, true? It gives me what? Partial mu minus partial So it is the same thing. It contains the derivatives of the both types. Okay? True? Got it? So this is the either Lagrange equation for the field phi. We have taken phi to be any arbitrary field. Okay? So in this case, what is our field? Our field is what? A. Is that true? So A means is our field. Phi x. Okay, let us do this. So what you, how this equation will uh, look like? So you are having partial mu by partial L by partial partial mu. Is it true? So then what you have to put? It was phi here? Minus okay, let me write it. Partial L by partial phi is equal to zero. Okay, I have take, uh, taken this phi any kind of field. It can be what? A scalar field, a vector field, mm, or any arbitrary field, okay? So what is our field here? It's a vector field A, okay? So I will replace this phi by A, okay? Since A is a vector field, so that means I need to put an index on this A. Okay? So let's write, since I have already replaced it mu, mu is what? A dummy index here. So let me write an, another index A. Okay. So now this is a vector equation. 
Because how many components uh, this yields? Four. New goes from zero to three. New equal to zero, new equal to one, new equal to two, new equal to three, okay? So you are having four equations here. Why you are having how many components of field? Four components. You will be having an equation corresponding to phi, equation corresponding to ax, ay, and az. Clear? Got it? So phi I have replaced by this a. Okay, now let's take this simple mm, Lagrange. Let's take this. Minus 1 by 4, okay, sorry. 16 pi c, f mu nu, okay. Since I used f mu nu, I will use alpha beta like this thing because these are the demi variables. Okay, this is in the free space. Okay, so I am not assuming any current. Okay, so this is the free Lagrange. So now what I need to calculate? I need to calculate equation of motion, how it looks like. And let's put, uh, okay, let's put the current there as well. Let's put current. So you are having this J alpha A alpha. Clear? So this is now the electromagnetic field. Is it in, okay, it's in presence of a source J. Clear? Okay, so now let's calculate this thing. So first we will calculate this partial L by a part. Does this contain, does this uh, object contain any derivative? First tell me, does it contain a derivative? No, it's a simple it, differentiation with respect to variable, okay, simple variable A, clear? So if you look at this uh, thing, so this contains derivatives. Does it contain derivatives? How this F looks like? Okay, let me write how it, it looks like. It's partial alpha A beta minus partial beta A alpha. Then you are having what? Partial alpha A beta minus partial beta A alpha, is it? So that means this, uh, this term contains derivatives, is it? Derivatives with respect to A. So it means if I am making differentiation of L with respect to A, this will not contribute, clear? So this term does not contain derivatives, clear? So now let's take partial L, the first term, okay, partial L by partial A in U. So it means only that very term will contribute, okay, so it means J alpha you can take out, so it is simply partial A alpha by partial A in U. Can anyone tell me what this object is? So look here, so this is a contracurrent index, this also would. So can you tell me what this, okay, it's like this thing, minus J alpha, if you uh, remember the notation. So it is simply G minus J alpha, G nu alpha. If this would have been here, nu here, okay, or this alpha would have been at the bottom. That is the same kind, indices are at the same kind of places, okay, the bottom or up, okay, then it would be, have been a delta function, clear? So now what did you yield me? So alpha gets contracted, this new will move up, like this. Got it? So this is how we use it. Okay, now let's look at the first term. So I need to calculate this very term, partial L by partial nu. Okay, I will take a few examples. I will take two examples so that we can learn how to derive the equation of motion. Uh, Asma Kines. Okay, so let's do it. What I need to calculate, partial L by partial A nu. So this does not contain derivatives, this very term. So it will not contribute, okay? What will contribute? This object, okay. So let's calculate. So I am having, let's calculate a integer. So it will be minus one by 16 pi C Okay, so uh, I 
I will do uh, only two terms, rest of the terms you have to do, okay? So much I will just show how, how to do it. So it's minus 1 by 16 pi c, okay? When you apply, so you will be having a product to rule, okay? So, so much you need to apply the product to rule. So this is simply f alpha beta, okay, let me write f alpha beta, then partial by partial, a partial mu, a nu. So you keep this aside, okay, then make a derivative on this object, a partial alpha a beta minus partial beta a alpha, product rule I am doing, okay, plus you make a derivative on this object, so it's partial by partial mu a nu, okay, like this, partial alpha a beta minus partial beta a alpha, okay, then what remains? So this thing, so let's call that as alpha, f alpha. So this is a derivative on this object only. True? So I have just kept it as f alpha beta. So you are making simply the product rule of the differentiation. Okay, it is simply f alpha beta. Okay, then differentiation of this thing. Okay, then differentiation of this thing and keep it aside. This object is f alpha beta. I utilize it simply the notation for it. Okay, now let's take this object. Okay, so what is our first term? So it's partial by partial mu a nu, okay? So then you are having partial alpha a beta, okay? So it is this very term. Is it true? So now look here. So it's a derivative. So you can have df by df or dx by dx kind of thing. So you are having a derivative term here, derivative term here, is it? So then you are having field and field here, okay? So so much on. So it means it is simply the kind of differentiation dx by dx, a uh, dx i by dx g, is it? So much on. You can call this thing, let's say f alpha beta, differentiation with respect to f alpha mu. Got it? Okay. Now look here. So why is this index? No. So okay. Okay. So this index is up and this index is what? Lower. It is the same kind of thing, upper and what? Lower one. Okay. So what this will yield me? Since you, you need to compare the uh, indices of the corresponding term. So it will yield me G alpha mu, okay? Then you are having G beta mu. Okay, let? So, so, much, so let's take the, okay, um, this very term. Let's calculate from this very object. Okay, so you are having partial by partial A partial mu a mu, then you are having partial alpha a beta, okay? So where are both the terms? So it is down and down, this is also what? Down and down. So what you will write simply? Delta alpha mu, clear? Teacher, because if you see, since it is an index in the denominator, a lower index in the denominator, it will appear, when you look in the numerator, it will look, appear as the upper index, teacher? So, is it true? Okay, so what this will give me? So, beta and mu. Clear? So, so, much now? so, shall I now write the derivatives of all these terms? Shall I write? So, you now got how to do it. Eh? Okay. So, it is minus 1 by 16 pi c. Okay, f alpha beta. Okay, so what is the first term? So it is G alpha mu, then G nu beta minus, now you are having here partial mu, partial beta, is it? So it will be some G beta mu, okay, G alpha mu. True? Is it? Clear? Huh? Okay. Then what you are having here? So it will be delta mu alpha, delta nu beta minus, so you are having delta mu and beta, so mu beta, delta nu alpha. Then you are having F Okay? Clear?
Okay, so let's count that. So what it will be? So let's take this very term. So f alpha, alpha will get contracted. It will be replaced by mu, is it? Then you are saying beta, beta gets contracted. It will be replaced by mu. You should. So the first term will give me. So the first term gives me. Okay, one by sixteen pi c. Okay, first term gives me f mu. Uh, sorry, it will raise. I am sorry. It will raise because this alpha gets contracted. So this g upper will raise the index. This alpha here is it. So it will be f mu mu. Okay, then minus. Now look here. You are saying alpha beta. So this beta will be replaced by mu, and this alpha will be replaced by mu. So it is alpha f mu mu. Okay. Then you are having another term. So now look at it. Alpha and alpha. So this alpha replaced will be mu. So it's again plus f mu mu minus f mu. We know f mu mu is an anti-symmetric object. So it is minus one by sixteen pi c. Okay. So this will be what? Minus times f mu nu. This is what minus times f mu nu. Okay. So it means it's four times f mu nu. So what you got? So it's minus one by four. Sorry, four by c. F. True. So much more. So in case of okay. So when we started with the Lagrangian, we wrote okay. In the Lagrangian, we wrote like this. Minus one by sixteen pi c f alpha beta f alpha beta minus j alpha a alpha is it? But there is a term what we call as one by c. So there should be one by c squared. Eh? So it contains one by c squared. Okay. So that means the derivative term. Well, what we call calculate partial l by partial a nu. So that's what minus one by c squared. Okay, so much more. So there was actually one by c square, which I forgot. Eh? So now let's try. So you are having partial mu, partial l by partial partial mu a nu, minus partial l by partial a nu. That's equal to zero. What it yields me? So it's equal to partial mu. What is this object? In? It's minus one by four pi c f mu nu. Okay, is equal to. So this is equal to minus. One by c square g. Okay, you can take it up on the other side if you give me this up. What it gives me? So it is simply partial mu f mu nu is equal to four pi by c g. Okay, so what it is? It's the Maxwell equation. We have already we have already derived these things. Okay, so much more. Okay, okay, so this will be the home assignment. You are saying L is equal to half of partial mu phi, partial mu phi. Phi is an uh, scalar field minus half of m square phi square. Okay. You, now you need to use uh, the Euler Lagrange equation in terms of phi. No indices on phi, is it? So just derive it. Eh? So you will arrive at a, this kind of equation: partial mu, partial mu plus m square acting on phi is equal to zero. This is known as Klein-Gordon equation. So you will arrive at this kind of okay. So just to apply Euler-Lagrange equation on this thing, you will arrive at this equation. Okay, clear? Okay. So this finishes our Euler-Lagrange equation business. Now let's take a simple thing. So this Lagrange L is equal to L phi bar gamma. Okay. Okay. Let. Okay. So let's try. Let's take the derivative with respect to this x mu, the coordinate. Okay. Let's take its partial derivative with respect to this L. So what I will derive? So it's partial L by. Now tell me. Okay. Let's try this. Way. Let's first try this. Way. Let's take the variation in L, simple variation. So it's partial L by partial phi, delta phi. Is it true? So just take the variation, partial L by partial partial mu phi, and delta 
Can I write it? Okay. So this I can write here. Okay. So this very object. Let me skip. Uh, okay. Let me write that. So this partial by partial x mu acting on this partial mu phi. So this is actually equal to like this thing. X mu partial by partial x mu. Sorry. Partial by partial x mu phi. It's in this fashion. Eh? So can I write it like this way? Partial by partial x mu. Partial by partial x mu phi. Can I write it? Because these are partial derivatives, I can interchange the two, so I can write it partial mu acting on this thing, partial by partial x mu phi. Okay, so this is same as partial mu partial mu phi. Okay, clear? So this okay. So I am simply interchanging the derivatives. So that means I can write this term here by partial. Mu. Now look at the two terms. It is simply the total derivative. Okay, so or I can write partial L by partial x mu. So that's equal to partial mu. Now let me write these things. So partial by partial mu phi. Okay, part. So this is partial. Okay. Now let's uh, apply the total. So it will be differentiation of this object, keeping this aside, plus keeping this term aside, differentiation of this thing. Is that true? So it's simply the total derivative of this object. Okay. So now you are having partial mu on this side, is it? What you are having here? So this object is actually equal to partial mu L. Okay. So this very object is partial mu L. Okay. So this I can write in this fashion. Now let's go. So this I can write G mu nu. Okay. Par partial mu L. Can I write it? Because the new index will get contracted. So this mu appear here. Clear? Can I write it? Everybody follows it. Okay. So it means so. Therefore, 
Okay, now instead of this thing, mm, I can put, okay, so you can write here. So therefore I can write it partial nu, this g mu nu L, like this thing, because g mu is a flat space time matrix. I can write it like this thing, partial nu acting on the g mu nu, okay, minus this object, okay, partial L by partial nu phi, okay, partial nu phi, that's going to zero, okay? You got my point? So that means this very object is actually a conserved. Co so uh, a derivative of this very object is equal to zero. So that means this is a conserved quantity. Is that true? So we call this object as. So you can write it as partial nu t mu nu is equal to zero, where. First appears as new. So, although it's a, we will see, so uh, there is no problem. I will write it in this section. Okay? So, so, we call this as energy momentum density. So, it corresponds to what? Energy momentum density. So much more. Got it? So we'll see in a moment uh, the components of this thing, what exactly kills me. Kill it? So uh, in other words, I can put, so let me write this very equation. So or I can write this partial mu p mu nu is equal to 0. Because nu is a dim index, I can replace it by mu and keep nu as a free index. Okay? So what does this mean? So yesterday, if you remember, so we had this partial mu j mu is equal to 0. We call then there exists a quantity j mu defined on some hypersurface gs mu that is conserved. Remember? Yes, it is. So if I take hypersurface x equal to x0 equal to constant, so then it will be simply j0 integrate to our volume that gives me the charge. Samasha? So what does this mean? So it means there exists a quantity, okay, which call index, okay, so let's try t mu nu. So there is one index which is contracted, is it? Let's call that index as mu and integrate it over some hypersurface ds mu. So some sure? Okay, so this is some hypersurface. Okay, so it means this object is a conserved quantity. Clear? Got it? Any question? Okay, so now let's calculate the components. Okay, so what I mean by that? Okay, let's choose our hypersurface. Let's choose x is equal x not equal to constant. Okay, so what is the hypersurface? So it is simply now three volume, okay? Simply dv. Then I call, okay, this object. Then I define this p mu. Okay, when I take, okay, now look here. So when I take uh, uh, hypersurface x not equal to constant, look at the, okay, let me first explain here. So when I take x not equal to constant, okay, let's take x not equal to constant. What it means? So it means j0 then dv, is it? So much more? You got it? So it means this very object is conserved. So it implies then if I take x0 equal to constant, so it means I have to put this mu equal to 0. So much more, just replace then d as 0 by d3x or dv, okay? So it implies then, if I take this constant, it implies then p0 nu dv is a conserved. Got it? We call this very object, let's write p mu. Okay, let me choose what are the units I have chosen. Okay, 1 by c. Okay, in 
integration of d zero mu d b. Okay, so this we call as the So that means uh, the pore momentum is a conserved quantity. Okay, let's calculate its zero component. Let's take zero component. Then you will appreciate this very objective. Okay? Then we'll calculate the, uh, all the components of this D, I, J. What are those components? Then interpret this very equation. Let's take P is zero. So if I take, okay? So therefore, let's take P is zero. So I can have T zero zero T. Okay, let's calculate what this t is zero zero implies. Let's take t is zero zero from here. Okay, so I am having t is zero zero. So it is a partial L. All indices put to zero, like this thing. Partial zero five minus g zero zero L. Clear? Got it? Okay. So now what this object is? It's partial L by partial five dot. Okay, because partial zero phi is a phi dot, is it? Then multiply by again partial zero, so it is phi dot. G zero zero is one. It's L. Can anyone tell me what this is? So usually, yes, it is Hamiltonian, but it's a density. Hamiltonian density. Okay, because you are having a Lagrangian density, so this actually is the density. So much more. So we call this as the Hamiltonian. Let's call that as. Hamiltonian density, yeah? or energy density. So now T zero zero represents me the energy density. Okay. So if this represents energy energy density, when we integrate this over volume, okay, then what it will give me? Simply the energy. So so much more. So that means this gives me okay one by C. Then the integral of this thing is simply. Okay, so this E is energy, total energy, I should say. Total energy of the field of fire. Summation, ah? Uh -huh. Okay, so we are taking arbitrary field of fire. So for that very field, energy will be given by what? P is zero zero. Okay. So similarly, if I take P I, I components will represent. The, okay. Okay, P I represents components of P momentum vector. Vector. Okay, so therefore I can write this P mu is equal to. Okay, so the first term is P zero, then another terms are what vector P. So P zero is our E by C. Okay, then you are in. So much more. Remember this very quantity. Clear? <coughs> okay. So how much time is remaining? 